Hey right, guys, what's going on? Happy Monday to you, Monday, February 7th. Welcome to Jedi Oshi. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. This is going to be a long video today. We have a lot to cover. A lot happened this weekend. And let's get let's just get started. And um, we're going to start with equities today. Looking at the S&P. Obviously, we like we keep one eye on the equities market because they are so correlated. And it matters. So this is the daily chart. We have a small candle body, a small body candle today uh, so far, and we'll see what happens. S&P is at 4511, kind of hovering around this 4500 level. So, you know, we'll see what happens. But um, the hourly, let's look at that real quick. Kind of had a little bit of a drift overnight. And then I guess I'm not sure. No, this is not overnight. Whatever. <laughs> um, we're up a little bit on the day and um, that's that. So what's good for equities is good for crypto. We're watching that. Look at that. We're moving up a little bit at 13 and we're up 13 points on the day to 4513. I think, and you know, my grand theory guys, my grand theory is that we're, we're headed for a blow off on all markets. So I think at some point we move up out of here. Don't forget. We called this 618 kiss. Look at that 618 kiss. That was the live stream last week, right? So that's that. But um, so that's kind of the equities. I want to show you the overlay and the overlay update. We are, this is the daily, right? So first, let me show you the four hour. Look at that. This is actually normalized here to the bottom. And if you recall, and I know you do last week, equities were up. Bitcoin was lagging. And we were like, what's going on? Why, why are, why is Bitcoin not following or whatever? What's going to happen to Bitcoin? Well, it's, it's caught up. And, um, so nice to see that. So again, all markets are moving up right now. Um, I do expect equities to blow off and you know, what happens to Bitcoin? Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that, but, um, I think what's good for equities is good for Bitcoin and what's good for, for all risk assets, right? So. One thing that is important that we do look at is the dollar. We are down from a high of 97.40 and we're kind of hanging on this line. Look at that. Look at that trend line. This is the daily chart and we're at 95.4. I think if we, if we can break this chart, we can break this chart down here. That'll be even better. And, and so if I'm expecting a blow off in equities, I'm also probably expecting a dollar, you know, at least a short term breakdown here. And um, that would help fuel everything, right? So the dollar is important in my opinion because it's a fuel for the fire and, you know, a weaker dollar means relative asset prices are better or it can be higher, whether that's stocks or even crypto or whatever. So, you know, I'm not an expert on the dollar and, and how it plays in the markets, but, um, you know, I do understand that stronger dollar usually puts pressure on stocks and in crypto. Weaker weaker dollar uh, is kind of an assistant or assistance to better prices, or it, it uh, provides a better condition for uh, for stronger prices. So we're getting that. Last week we had a dollar dollar in decline. You know, today whatever. I think if we can break down maybe this week, you know, that'll really help. Let's get into what we're all here for, right? Um, this is Bitcoin last week and this weekend. We talked a little bit about this, uh, or I posted this in our Telegram support resistance zone. Look at this all the way back to January of last year, right? So kind of a high point here. We broke through, we broke back through the floor, kind of found a ceiling here in June. And then we finally broke out or we tested again in July, uh, fell off a little bit and then blasted through. Uh, came back and tested a floor in September, then to put it in a new all-time high at 69k for Bitcoin. So, you know that, um, and then and then you can see in January we kind of bounced a floor and then we broke through, and now and that was the big thing. Two things really is uh, flipping this flipping 4041k from resistance to support this whole zone. That's important. Looks like we're in the process of doing that, and. Um, and then the other one that was an immediate overhead resistance was the 50 MA on the daily. And last night we didn't break it, but today we're above it. So we need to flip us. We need to flip support resistance, uh, to support. 
we need to flip these MAs into support. We need to start breaking these. You know, breaking this daily, uh, breaking this daily MA is is a, a pretty big game changer, right? So I posted last night, but if you look at these, um, the last time or the last couple of times that we've broken through, we went on to make we make we went we went on to have nice runs, right? So. The first time in the last, say, 12 months, the first time was in July when we broke out of the summer uh, correction and went on to set um, an intermediate high point. And then after that, we broke back through it again in October and we went on to make a new all-time high. So here we are, kind of a critical day here, uh, breaking this 50, uh, breaking through, breaking through um, this support resistance zone. Uh, good to see. Really nice to see that. Um, let's go to, we're going to get into some, some of the alts that you guys are, were talking about, but let's get into a little bit lower time frame on Bitcoin first, uh, on the one hour. So as we know, obviously we're watching Friday, we, we started moving up Friday morning, Saturday sideways, Saturday's always sideways. And, um, and then sun, this was what last night? Yeah, right at, this was the futures open, guys. I, I keep telling you guys, these markets are all tied together, right? I mean, it was literally on the five-minute candle, and it was two five-minute candles straight up with good volume. I'm like, guys, futures just flipped on. Here goes Bitcoin. Here we go. So that was last night, Sunday night. We had a nice, a nice pump into about almost midnight, uh, a little bit of a fade, but if you just remember the equities chart, we faded there too. And now we're moving back up. So here we go. Um, 43.5. Well, let's look at some ideas that we had. Right. So uh, one is, I mean, I guess, you know, one is up only, but let's look at, let's draw a, let's draw a kind of a neckline here. So this idea, this idea would, let me just, I'm just, I'm just going to draw it out for you, but this idea would be um, a head and shoulders with a neckline of about 43, 44. So about here. So this idea is basically that we have, we find resistance pretty soon, maybe today or tomorrow, and we form a right shoulder. And this right shoulder, usually the right shoulder is a little bit higher. Uh, and again, this is a wick over here at down to 39.3. So usually the right shoulder is a little bit higher. I'm gonna put it down here at the candle body. And oftentimes it's smaller. So let me just draw this out. And it's hard to get time, but let's say this lasts for, oh, let's, let's give it a week. Maybe Valentine's Day, a week from today. So perhaps, um, if I can get that close, there we go. You know, perhaps we find resistance at this at this level, and we bleed off from say forty three to forty one, which isn't even a big pullback, really. Um, but if we form a right shoulder here, um, you know, this target, and this is what we were looking at last night. If you look at the target on a head and shoulders, what you what you do is you take the I'm just trying, trying to get my price range. You take the, the top of the head to the neckline, right? So that's 32%. Or we're going to use the dollars. $10,700 10, on the price range. So I use that from the neckline up. So 10700 would be there. And don't hold me to these exact numbers, but neckline about in this area, maybe around 43, 44. Maybe around here somewhere, although we're we're moving up, um, and a neckline to head distance of 10,700, 10, You put that on top of the neckline, you and you project it upwards. Uh, what was interesting to me was if you take a fib on your entire correction down, you get pretty close to the six one eight level. So, and and that doesn't, but this doesn't mean that we go straight up, right? That's just an ultimate target for a head and shoulders. So one idea is we have a 
short-term correction, say starting tomorrow or Wednesday. And we don't have to. I just, you know, if this if this does play out, then we get a short-term correction. And then we um, we move up to target of head and shoulders. So something like, and I'm not sure if, you know, that. What could we do something like that? Oops, that's one through five. Let's do ABC. Because I'm expecting this retrace to look a lot more ABC than, you know, let's do A, B, C. And I don't have all the rules and everything for what ABC has to look like. Um, I'm not sure there are a lot of rules on ABC. There are more on one through five. But, um, you know, we can see something like this, you know, for our retrace. And if you're following the channel and what we're doing, you know, if this is the the top of the bull market, and if we're in the bear market now, um, this could be our final retrace. We'll see if alts just go crazy, right? From here until the end of this thing. And that's a good time to take profits, step off. Um, you know, that'll be, that's my signal. And then especially we're going to see some chart breakdowns and, you know, in Bitcoin, whatever it may look like a topping area. Alts may continue to run, but as soon as that breaks down, that's your signal to get out. Right? So, um, let's look at, so that's the head and shoulders idea with the target close to cl target close to the 618. Um, that to me seems pretty likely. I have other scenarios, but, um, that in a retrace could 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 happen. Um, let's look at the RSI. I think I don't have it on here. So let's pull up the RSI real quick because I want to look at strength here to show you guys what's going on low uh, time frame. This is, and these are, I'm not going to, well, let me take the time to change a couple things. Let me just go to nine on my thing. RSI, it's fine, but I'll take it off. Okay, guys, we're cooked. This is um, an RSI of 80. This is the four hour, so it's pretty significant. RSI of 87. Now, it doesn't mean we're this is the top and we have to go down, but this is pretty overheated. This is pretty overbought relatively, right? Relative to its recent past, and that's what it means. So I would not be surprised for to get a pullback from here and, um, you know, but again, don't be surprised to be surprised. This is Bitcoin. So, you know, we'll see. But as far as indica indicators go, the RSI is 87. Look at the last time. And we did this when we were down here too, right? We, we talked about this a lot. You know, guys, RSI is the lowest it's been since blah, 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 you know, on the daily and the weekly. So on the four hour, the RSI is 87. That's just a little bit of caution, you know, but let's look at this. Let's look at um, these two time points right here, 487. That's October 6th and July 26th. Okay, what happened? You know, basically we got pretty cooked on RSI. We had a little bit of a, you know, a bounce here, kind of correcting. And then we still went up a little bit more because you can go up on, you can make higher highs on lower RSI. But as we know, that's a signal to us, right? So that's just... Um, you know, you can keep going up on the lower RSI. As we looked at the daily or the weekly Bitcoin chart, and we were going up on, you know, for months on lower RSI on the weekly. So that's the four out. Oh, that was that time period. The other time period is here, October 6th. We had a really hot RSI. But again, right? Doesn't mean that it's the market top. It just means that, you know, caution. You know, so we continued to go up from 53 all the way to 69 on lower RSI, we dropped from, from here, but then we did, we did see another spike at the top. But, um, just because your RSI is either hot or cold, high or low, it doesn't mean that you're, it's a low, it's a, it's a low or a high. It just means that the market conditions are either overbought or oversold, but they can stay that way. That's my point. So, and, and you can keep rising on lower strength, which is a signal that a uh, trend can change. Um, let's see. I think that's all for Bitcoin. We're up 1200 on the day so far. Um, nice to see that. And nice to see the, um, uh, vaults actually doing really well. 
So, you know, we're going to take a look at some of that too. One last thing before we do, um, Bitcoin dominance. This is the weekly chart. Let me zoom out. So this goes all the way back to 2017. So in 2017, we're up at 95% and we dropped off that kind of this ledge, right? We dropped off the ledge, we came back, and then we finally found a bottom at 35%. Um, we're up here. And um, so the whole theory is that if we break this, all right, so here's here's the kind of like the big picture idea, the theory, is that Bitcoin goes to retrace. Okay, well, let me start with this. If the top is in, the top is in, we get a first correction, it's in this retrace that all seasons typically happen. And then you have liquidity moving from the majors to the minors. That's when alts pump. So if 69 is the top, let's just say 69 top. It doesn't have to be. Well, let's just say it is. There's some work that, that shows uh, an argument that it is. And um, based on fibs and market caps and such. But um, here we are. It's in this retrace that alts will rip. So what, what I'm also expecting and why we looked at why we look at Bitcoin dominance is that this should fall and that'll you'll or, or you will see that dominance will should fall uh, in this time period and provide even more fuel to alts. So that's the top. This is our bottom. Say it's 31 you know, the 53% correction or whatever it was. We move back up, say we get to 618. And then cycles over. And I think alts will, t alt alts will tell the, the story here. Um, and obviously we'll watch it along the way too. But uh, that's kind of the story there and that's why we look at, at dominance. But uh, I wore my shib hat for you guys today because it's shib day and we're gonna summon the shib army Guys, this is crazy. It's nice to see this. We need to be we need to be on our toes because we're not going to miss another another pump. But I wanted to show you a couple things on SHIB. Okay. The last time we ran on SHIB, October 4th. Look, three days. Up, up, up. Then we had, I think this was about two weeks of sideways, maybe 10, 12 days. 10, 12 days of sideways at the top. And then one, two, three, four, five days to the top. So about after breakout here, after breakout, it was about three days up. I call it, call it four because of this candle on this wick or the wick on this candle. So three to four days of up sideways at the top. And then pow, I want to show you volume. And that's one thing that is, was a little concerning last night. However, which I, I think we just haven't seen it yet. Okay. So the volume here is not the same as here, right? I mean, we haven't seen it yet, but it is relatively higher and that's a good, that's good. We're seeing a nice move off the bottom, you know, ship is back at 3,200. That's great. Um, we haven't seen the big body candles yet, the big volume body candles yet, but perhaps that's coming. Right, so sometimes if you let's look at this area right here. And I sent you guys a little clip in the video. But see this ramp right here off the bottom? You had a ramp, then once you finally broke out, you got your volume. You see that a lot. You see that a lot. A lot of times it's the volume is your early warning indicator, your signal, sort of, you know, with other thing other things. But you get a volume ramp and then you get a pop. And you're on your way with big volume pouring in. So, you know, it would be fantastic to see something like a Robin Hood list or whatever. But let me show you guys um, some levels that I'm looking at on SHIB um, as far as like profit taking areas. The level we had, well, let's do the macro. Okay, on the big side. Okay, notice what happened. So on cycle, and this is Binance, 
I, I realize that Shiv has been around for a long time. But um, this is all the chart we have. The, the cycle low here, top to low, we got the golden zone. Look at that, golden zone. I'll also show you how it's a 4236 on a range. But um, golden zone and then a pullback all the way back to below the 382, above the 236, but a pretty deep pullback. Um, the push also here was a, was above the 4236. So on the local on the local sense, we we're above 4236. On the macro, we we're in the golden zone. Um, you know, so that was that. If you go back to zooming out on macro, the macro 4236, and this is why I call it 20K. The macro 4236 is close here to uh, 20K, 4.0002, whatever. I always just start from this end and work, you know, call it 20,000, call it 3,200 right now, instead of doing, you know, the zeros or scientific notation. You know, what is that? 3.2 times 10 to the minus one, two, four, five, whatever. Um, the 4,2,3, so note that from the prior cycle, the 4,2,3,6 is at 20,000. Okay. Also note that from this cycle, this kind of intermediate cycle here, down to here, it's about, you know, it's about 2618. And you see that, you know, like my grand cycle and then a smaller cycle, but those are 2618. Man, if we get to 20K, you know, I'm probably out, you know, for sure, especially on the chart breakdown. And we need to look at the lower time frames, uh, one hour, four hour, for our higher high, lower RSI signal. But, um, you know, that's what I'll be looking at. But really nice to see this push off the bottom. You know, really nice yesterday. We had a 26% a day yesterday and working on another 10 today. So just nice to see that. But um, if you go back and look at some of the previous candles, recall that, I'm just going to take that all out. You know, this first push for three or four days, that was 60%, 28%, 60%, and... And then we had a wick sideways at the top and we had 21 percent 6 17 13 and then 65. so what was interesting here was you had the highest move at the end you know kind of a big blow off on big volume hard to spot that honestly unless you're you know you're pre-watching your fibs and everything else but um but yeah we'll keep we're gonna manifest this to 20k maybe 10. you know if we get to 10 you know, we all have to do what we have to do. 10 will be great. 20 will be huge. You know, we'll see. But uh, but that's SHIB. Let's go to, I know you guys wanted to talk about T-Fuel. So let's look at T-Fuel. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the weekly chart. So just for structure. And yes, we know that T-Fuel was an airdrop. It's free. So it theoretically started at zero, right? So these percents are theoretically infinite. But um, here's why, here's here's what concerns me about T-Fuel. And I'm not concerned because it's not a mover. I'm not concerned because, you know, look, it's 80, 90% off the bottom. What concerns me is, is, you know, we just looked at SHIB. If SHIB can go to 10 or 20K, that's a three or a, uh, what would that be, 6X? Three to 6X? I'm not sure T fuel has three to six X. I mean, if it got to a dollar, it'd be a five X and it very well might, you know, but look, but you know, this thing is just way, it's just way up there guys. You know, even from, and this is a little bit hard to do, but we, you know, we saw the grand cycle work on, on SHIB. And if you take the same approach and granted, yeah, this is weekly. So it's, it's fine. If you take the top of this candle and then you range bottom this here at the lows, although it was kind of a consolidation. So actually let's bring it back to here and the bottom, probably a better approach. Okay. So either way, guys, we looked at Shiv, right? Golden zone, one, six, one, eight, fall back two, three, six. Guys, this thing ran to 25. 
Look. I mean, it's that's that's. I mean, we've seen stuff go to four hundred, right? Um, let's just put let's put a couple lines on here. So what you can do is you can go into your fib, right? At four hundred, I'm somehow I have two hundred, hundred. Let's put fifty because we're not seeing it. It's got to be lower. Fifteen hundred. There, there we go. So what you're saying is, oh, T fuel's going to a dollar thirty. That's a fifty on your fib from this part of the chart, right? That's a fifty on your fib. I mean, if Shib went to fifty on the fib, right? What would it be? A penny. So this is what my reservation on T fuel is that we've already come and hit the twenty five. That's just me. I think it's a great project. I think it's a great asset. I think I do actually have some, not a whole lot. I have some T fuel and, um, sure I'd share it on, but, um, you know, I just, for me, I have other charts that, that look like there's more potential upside, but let's look at, um, some, some X factors. Okay. Beautiful move off the bottom from 11 cents. We're about a hundred percent up and let's just take that current price point to Old all time high. That's a two and a half X. Okay. Let's go to the 50 fib is a five X. So you're sitting in an asset with, with say a five X to the 50 fib. And you have to ask yourself, is that where you want to be with a five X to the 50 fib? Now, granted it's an old cycle and maybe I'm doing something wrong on the analysis, but that's how I look at it. Right? One last thing. This high to low, the swing high, swing low here. It is a 50 fib or up to a dollar is into the golden zone of this range. So yeah, I think it's, I think there's a chance it goes to a dollar, but I'm not, I'm not trading that. I've already, I already got out back here on, um, you know, in this time frame around, I think 50 cents. So I'm out of a position here. I, well, I do have some but it's not nearly what I had. And um, so that is the look. What you want to do is look for these fib levels to start breaking. You also want to see volume, right? Look, there's no volume yet. Although we have moved nicely off the bottom, been on relatively low volume. But again, a lot of things are moving up off the bottom with low volume. So not, not too concerning yet, but just keep your eyes on those things. And uh, that's kind of my assessment on T-Fuel. So I hope that helps. Uh, let's go to KDA. This was one that, um, you know, I, I'm not going to say I called it, but, you know, just scanning and looking at charts, this was one of the better looking charts that I saw. We hadn't relatively, this was a laggard and we hadn't run. And so if you go back to like the four hour, I think it was at about 618. It was right in here. It's like got, that I was like, guys, if you're looking for a chart with rel with nice relative strength, and that hasn't run yet, it's KDA. Go back to daily, because what I was looking at was um, this part of the chart right here. It was before these two candles. So if we do a replay on it, it was right about here. Right, so it was like, guys, we're, we're building strength on RSI. Like this, right? We're building strength, and we haven't cleared this range yet. And, you know, a lot, we've, we've watched a lot of other assets move up and clear this range. Like guys, this is a, this is a gem. And uh, sure enough, you get pop, 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 and we're moving up. Well, I'm just kicking in. I don't have a position here. Probably won't get one. Not that I'm not interested. I just, you know, I like it, but I know nothing about it. But I do like the, uh, I did like the chart a couple days ago. Um, that's KDA. Uh, let's look at Glimmer. I know we're up to 650 now. This was another one that we're, look, that we're looking at. Um, actually, let me just swap this out. Here on, actually, let's just do this. We can keep our indicators. Um, nice volume package the last few days, right here off the bottom. We had an intermediate bottom here at sub five. And one of the guys in our group, he took the, the breakout retest. Um, it was nice. Great trade. 
RSI pulling up through the bottom, pushing up. You know, you have a, an overhead wick all time high at 52. So, you know, this, even within to its all time high, was, at least at this point, was about 10x. So, go again, go back and think. Like, can T Fuel do, do a 10x? And where does it where does it go on the chart if it does 10x? Does Glimmer do 10x? This is one that I'll probably get a position maybe this week. Especially if we can get that inverse head and shoulders. If we can do a pullback from maybe 43. Um, we can do a pullback from 43. And, you know, I think that this may give us a chance here at maybe six bucks, maybe. But I'm not going to be too picky about it. I might just get a position to get a position. I think that, again, I explained this, but the whole basis for this is I did hear about this last year that it would be coming out. Um, in my mind, it was, this is your second chance at Solana. And this is a massive project. There's a ton behind it. And you want to get this when it comes out. Well, it came out on the 11th of January this month. Pumped to 52 on the first sell, you know, on the first release, sold all the way off, and then it came back to five. And that's an that's a 90% drop. So I'm interested. I'm interested. I like that. Plus, with all the other, I mean fundamentals. I'm not sure if it's layer one, layer two, all that stuff, but um, you know, I do like the setup, although there's not a lot of chart history. I I I would like to get a position here. You know, as if this is this is uh, Solana 2.0. Guys, this is going to be great. This is going to be great. Uh, let's look. KDA is up to 780. I just didn't notice that on the one hour. KDA is up to 787. Cool. Well, we looked at some alts. T-Fuel, SHIB, KDA, Glimmer. Uh, and we looked at Bitcoin, FT. And let's look at some real strength. I know you guys can't see my, my side here. Akita is up. 30%. Well, that the timing on Akita is weird. Look at that. This is the one hour, guys. Look at that. Akita is at a 120. Nice. Oh, nice. Good. Oh, I'm worried about you, Akita. Um, also, guys, don't forget. Remember, we looked at this before. There is a potential dog pivot from Akita Shib to Ploki. It happened last time. Go check it out. Go look at the time that... Um, when Shib and Akita topped, and I believe it was November 1 or 2 or something like that, Floki began its run. So there is a series of dog points that, that do that. If Shib were to, say, just run for three to five days, and just outpace everything and just blow the doors off, you know, I'm out looking for the next opportunity, and it could be some going into Floki. Um, KDA, there we go. It's number two. Uh, SLP, smooth love potion. I mean, <laughs> smooth love potion. But hey, this is, um, look, it's up from 0.8 cents to 1.5 cents. It's double. Okay. Matic is up 13%. XRP is at 77 cents. Populous at 13% up. Gala, 13%. Elon, Shib, Shib, Voyager. No volume of Voyager. One thing that I wanted to do, and we this is 30 minutes, so I'll save it for tomorrow. I wanted to run you through a coin by coin look at where they are versus their 50 MA. Right, so we'll do that tomorrow. But it's interesting. If you have time, do it. Um, check that out because if you scroll through your watch list or a long list and look where each one is in relative to their 50 daily moving average. It's the 50 daily simple moving average. Right, so check that out. Uh, if not, we'll look at it together tomorrow. Shiv's moving up again. Heat is up. Good day for the dogs. Nice volume at 9 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Eastern. So good day for crypto, guys. One last look at Bitcoin. We'll we'll wrap this up. Wow. 43,888. There we go. Almost 44K, guys. S&P at 45.12. Okay, cool. Well, hey, thanks, guys. Thanks for being with us. This is 30-minute video. Thanks for watching it. Please like the video. Please subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. Send a DM for access to, to the Telegram. It's a community of people. We are working to think for ourselves, become 
chart savvy and uh, think like traders. So um, again, thanks for being here and until tomorrow, have a great day.